Ready? Ladies, this is Donovan McNabb, and you're watching The Real Robinson Report. Welcome to this week's Robinson Report, Real Robinson Report. We're here with the man, the myth, the legend. Some people think he's a legend. Donovan McNabb, what's going on, McNabb? Man, how you doing today, man? It's really good to be on this show. You know, one thing I think people need to understand is, you know, here's a guy that's working extremely hard at his craft, not just on the field, but off the field. Much respect to you, Mike. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Very professional. Very professional. Hey, you're well-spoken. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had my education at Syracuse University, the Syracuse University, uh, not Penn State. Um, again, Penn State University is one of the leading uh, universities in communications. We're better than Syracuse. Look at the numbers. Anyway, Donovan, how's this offseason treating you, man? You know what? It's been great. I think uh, one thing that, that uh, people will begin to see uh, as this lockout ends is the people who are working here at Fisher Sports uh, will be in great shape, uh, strong, will be prepared, ready to go, uh, and it feels like we're just leading right into the season. Um, how's the lockout treating you? I mean, obviously, you know, people think that it's millionaires versus billionaires and we, you know, guys don't, you know, want for money and things like that. We had Revis on and he's like, you know, money's not his issue. He just wants to play football. How, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's the same. And, um, you know, obviously it's a little different for veteran players and younger players. I think and for the veteran aspect of things, I think uh, we just want what's best. And I think uh, the respect value, the trust value is something that plays a major part in the decision makings that we're, we're a part of. Uh, not just for the players who are playing now, uh, but the players who are coming into the draft, the players who are in their freshman, sophomore years in college, as well as the players who have played before us, who have paved the way uh, for them to get that respect and the financial benefits that they need uh, who are coming down with these injuries that they had had 20, 30 years ago while they played, uh, for them to, to get those medical benefits as well. Talk about how important you know, uh, having mini camp OTAs and things like that are for a young rookie quarterback. You look at guys like Cam Newton, Blaine Gabbert, uh, Christian Ponder. Uh, what, what difficulties will they encounter not having minicamp or OTAs? Well, you know what, what minicamp does for, not just for the young guys, but for the veterans as well, is you get an opportunity to kick the rust off, be around the guys, uh, get that, that speed and that tempo of being back in game situation. Uh, I think also for the young guys as well as the younger guys, or younger, younger guys as well as older guys, uh, you can get back into the playbook and kind of get that form of, of where guys are going to be, uh, work on your timing and things of that nature. For the younger guys, I think uh, now they're beginning to adjust from the college level to the NFL level, the speed of the game, the mental aspect, uh, the physical aspect, uh, and now knowing that your body is tired and mentally you're not, you don't want to go anymore, you have to put that extra time in. Um, you know, you were a longtime Eagle, you know, had great years with, with, with Philadelphia. Um, how weird was it playing against those guys? I had an opportunity to play against San Francisco a week after they cut me when I was with Seattle. Uh, how weird was that for you? Well, you know, it's a different feeling. Uh, you know, you know the pattern of, of waking up in the morning at a certain time, going to the facility, working out in the morning, going to your meetings, uh, putting on that practice jersey, knowing when practice is over, spending time afterwards. Uh, and there's a change. There's a change when you know that you've been traded, uh, you know, trying to find a new facility, uh, getting accustomed to the guys, getting accustomed to the offense, getting a relationship built with the coaches, uh, and so on and so on. So uh, the difficult aspect of it is your same routine that you had for over 11 years has to change now due to uh, the location, uh, the different places players, the uniforms, the, the different you know players that you will be competing with and competing against. Uh, so playing against the Philadelphia Eagles, it felt like I was supposed to go into their locker room, but you end up going into the, the uh, visitors locker room, which was a change. And then uh, playing back in veterans uh, in you know Lincoln Financial, where the fans you know gave me a standing ovation, it was a wonderful feeling. Uh, but yet and still, you got to get back to playing football, and uh, you know it was one that I always remember. Washington, you know. Um how difficult was it? How difficult was last year for you? You're a great player, man. You had a, you've had a great career, and obviously, I know per, I know you personally, and I know you didn't have the year you wanted to have. Um, how difficult was that for you? Well, it was very difficult. It was difficult because you know you're going into a new system, you're going into new players, you're going into new surroundings. Uh, you're trying to do the things that you have done over the past 11 years, uh, and things change. You know, you're trying to sort of not really be a robot in to what they want, 
but you want to obviously be perfect in what they're trying to teach you and trying to show you. Uh, and it just wasn't me. Something that I, I've had an opportunity, obviously, going through the year, uh, this offseason, playing big dividends of, of uh, what I've learned over the past year. Obviously, the the rumors and hoopla and all of that I put behind me and just focused on trying to be better in my craft. I uh, spent a lot of time here, as you, as you know, just uh, working on footwork, working on accuracy, working on things that I know that could make me a better quarterback and the things that made me kind of special in my years at Philadelphia. I look forward to getting back to that and, uh, you know, wherever it may be, if it's back in Washington or wherever, um, you know, it's going to be a great year for me. Million dollar question. Where would Donovan McNabb be 2011? You know what? I'll be somewhere. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, that's all I can really give you at this particular point. I mean, there's been a lot of talk uh, that I don't focus on when this lockout ends. Then we'll definitely find out. You know, uh, words got to be spoken. I mean, we've, we've talked with the Redskins uh, before the lockout happened. Uh, kind of aired out our differences and, and just tried to see where everybody's head was at. Obviously, the lockout happened where we had to, to stop talks. Uh, but once the lock, lockout ends, you know, we'll kind of get back on the phone, get back in each other's faces and find out. Um, jumping off a little bit of a different subject, <clears throat> um, you were a quarterback that I admired. Uh, when I was playing, when I was playing quarterback in my days at Penn State, um, African American quarterback, I was an African American quarterback. Um, you were kind of like the leader for you know our, our generation, and you see more and more African American quarterbacks coming into the league. Um, how important do you do, do you view your um, I don't I want to say stature, but how important do you view your that younger guys are looking at you, especially to win a Super Bowl or to, to win all the accolades, to, to kind of give the, the, the African-American quarterback a different a different stigma, a different, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know what, I, I take pride in that because, you know, I, I feel myself as, as sort of uh, a catalyst. I, I feel myself as, as uh, one that's holding the torch, the torch that was lit by uh, you know, Gilliam, the torch that was lit by Doug Williams and James Harris and those guys that was passed down to Warren Moon over to, you know, myself and Randall Cunningham and those guys. And now you have guys who are playing on the, the high school level, the college level, who are receiving big accolades and, and, and receiving big looks uh, and opportunities to play on this particular level. I think one thing that you try to show uh, is, one, how to be a professional, two, how to carry yourself as a man, uh, and three, how to be successful in this particular the league. You got to spend time. Uh, you got to perfect your craft. Uh, you have to do the things that people say you can't do. Um, there's going to be, you know, people with opinions and negative eyes towards you, uh, but you can't focus on that. I think one thing that I try to do is uh, to try to show that you're the bigger man in, in negative situations. Um, you know, when the time comes and the lights are on, you're ready to go and you're ready to do what it takes to be uh, the quarterback that your 10 other guys that are on the field with you expect you to be uh, and try to make plays when the plays need to be made. And, and I think that's all that you ask in, in guys. And that's all the players want. They want that type of respect to know that when the ball's in my hands, you have that utmost confidence that I'm going to be able to make that play for you. What do you say to the naysayers who say Donovan McNabb is finished? Well, you know, I think one thing that you have to, to have to realize is that if one man, meaning me, you, uh, all the other given players in the NFL, if he feels like he can't play anymore, then, he, then you're done. But if you have that confidence, you have that joy, you have that, that passion of playing the game and being the best at what you do, uh, no one can ever take anything away from you. Words, if, I mean, if physical aspect, whatever it may be, if you can step out on that field and you feel like you can make every play possible, then you can get the job done. Uh, but for, for those who say, I don't have anything left, just sit back and watch next year. It's going to be an exciting one. It's going to be one that you, you, know, you might say, oh, I didn't know that he was able to do that. Or, you know, that's not the same guy that I seen last year. No, it's not going to be the same guy you seen last year year because that just wasn't me you know I wasn't comfortable in what I was doing um, obviously people seeing that um, this year is going to be different and I think uh, I'm looking forward to it just like everybody else this is Donovan McNabb and you're watching the real Robinson report <laughs> he's core right you let me know when you're ready because this dude is <clears throat> You get them arms. You get them arms. You get them arms. Yeah, oh angle. my God. You get the good angle. <laughs> boy, five is full of them, boy. You full of them. Hey. You crazy, man. Hey, man. I have to make sure he got it. <laughs>